Hey guys, I'm Billy with Spectrain. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a super basic video. You guys know that I'm a huge fan of shot timers, and if you're trying to get better at shooting, if you don't know it already, you need a shot timer. It's really the only way to measure really precisely improvement where holes are in your game in terms of speed and time and efficiency in your shooting. And so when I show up to classes, I always uh, show up with this bag, which is just full of all the timers that are basically out there right now, at least the top contenders. Um, and I have them for folks to use and folks always wanna know, hey, what is your favorite timer? I wish I had a solid answer for that. Um, but a lot of these timers have pros and cons and excel depending on what you want to do with that timer, what your budget is, your use case, so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the top contenders in the field right now, at least that what I, what are my favorites. I'm gonna tell you what I like about these and what I don't, and we'll just kind of go through really quickly. Uh, one honorable mention that I'm not gonna include right now that I know people are gonna wanna know about is the Competition Electronics Pro Timer. Um, I just simply refuse to buy one of those um, for this video, and I don't own one that works anymore. Um, the deal with those is I, I, I would not recommend buying those in this day and age. There are a lot of guys that have been shooting for a long time that will still recommend them as the best timer out there, and it's because they were at one time. Um, you know, there was a time when they came out and they were just one of the best ones that are available on the market. However, that is simply no longer the case. Um, they don't offer really any unique features that the other timers I'm gonna show you here today don't offer. They are not as durable and reliable as these other timers, and their, comp and their, their customer service is probably the worst. Um, out of the rest of these. So I do not recommend those anymore. Um, they, they fail as soon as they get wet. Um, they charge like $40 to fix them. Um, so it's just not worth it in my opinion. So uh, diving in, this is probably the oldest one that I have that I've been using for the longest. This is the Pact Timer. Um, and this is just the workhorse timer in my collection. It's probably the simplest timer with the least amount of features but it has pretty much everything that you need for most shooters and absolutely nothing that you don't. It's very reliable, it's very durable, and it's the most affordable out of all the timers I'm gonna show you here today at coming in around 130 bucks, depending on obviously when you look at it and so forth. Um, this timer right here, actually this one is the old one uh, that I think I've had now for eight or nine years um, that I've been using this timer and it's still going pretty strong. The button has gotten just a little bit sticky but it's, uh, it's still pretty good. So I absolutely love these timers. The features that it has are instant and random. Those are the two modes. It has random delay only. There's no, you can't do a fixed delay on here. It's one of the reasons I like using this in my videos because folks know that when I have it on a delay, it is not a fixed delay where I can expect exactly when it's coming. It's on random only. Um, it doesn't have any kind of history. It doesn't like it, it let you look back, but it has instant random, lets you look at your times. And that's pretty much all that it does. It doesn't have volume adjustments. It does technically have a sensitivity adjustment. It's hidden inside the battery compartment um, that you can't really get to and you're not really supposed to mess with. But to be honest, the sensitivity on this is probably my favorite out of all the timers that are in here, even the ones that you can adjust and fine tune. And I say that because this does a really good job of picking up a wide range of weapons, i.e. Um, rifles, pistols, even PCCs, suppressed weapons. I've typically not had ever had an issue picking it up with this timer. Even my quietest, you know, PCC, I can put this on my belt and shoot it and it picks up those times just fine. But what it doesn't usually ever pick up is false positives, if you will. Like in other words, when I drop the slide on my pistol, it doesn't typically pick that up as a shot where some of the other timers are really prone to pick that up and give you false data there. So um, big fan of the, the sensitivity of this timer. It also has a very loud beep, um, which is great for class use, use at indoor ranges, that kind of thing. Um, some folks complain about it because it's kind of a pain to use in dry fire and there's no way to adjust the sensitivity on this timer. I don't know how well this will, this will come across um, obviously over this microphone, but my solution for you know dry fire, if you're not trying, it, it can actually be kind of painful to use indoors without hearing protection. Um, my solution for that is simply to put a paster over the speaker and it works really well. So here's the, the normal beep on this. And here it is with the paster. Hopefully you can tell that there's absolutely a massive difference in volume there. And it's just a simple, again, kind of dummy proof fix for using that, uh, that particular timer indoors. And so this honestly is one of my number one recommendations for timers that are out there right now, if you don't need all the fancy smart features, which almost nobody does, um, you're good to go. You can put a part-time on this, kind of whatever you want to do. It's a very simple 
straightforward timer. Probably the number one question I get about this timer is when folks see this. So uh, probably my main complaint about this is it does just have kind of a very basic spring steel clip on the back. It works, but like anything else, as soon as that gets overstretched one time, it really has lost a lot of its, its strength and kind of clamping power. And so depending on what this is clamped on, you know, you're running across the range. It does have the, the ability to, you know, fall off of your belt and go flying. So all I do is, um, for some of the ones that I use, if, especially if I'm only going to be using it myself for personal training and it's not coming on and off my belt all the time, is I just put two screws. Um, there's obviously holes back here. Uh, and I may have drilled another hole, I'm not sure. But I just put two screws through the existing clip that's on here and mount a tech lock um, to this. And now I can mount it to my belt in a 100% secure manner and run it like that. So there's not a whole lot to say about that other than you just screw it on. People ask how I do it all the time. Like there's holes right here. And you just <laughs> use the screws. So it's not a big deal. Um, that is the pack timer. Uh, the next one I'm going to mention, we're going to kind of go up in price here. This is uh, the AMG timer right here, right? Um, this is obviously kind of a big step forward in terms of modernizing the technology. You have an actual screen here that gives you more information. You have a lot of settings that you can adjust in terms of sensitivity, volume. You can do multiple part times on here, which is one of the cooler features on this. Um, the only really smart thing about this though is that it does have Bluetooth and it works with practice score. So if you're running matches and recording that data in practice score, this is probably the timer you should be using for matches because it is going to not only record your time and automatically sync that time over to the tablet where someone can't fat finger it or whatever, but it's also recording all of the information in there in terms of splits, right? So every single shot that you fire is recorded, as long as it's picked up on here, is gonna be recorded in practice score. And so at the end of your match, right, if you're a, you may be a lower level shooter, you can go actually do a side-by-side -side table comparison of all of your shots and splits versus whoever won that stage or your local GM or whatever it is that you wanna look at. And you can be like, hey, exactly where on this am I losing time? Very useful feature of this. However, you're not really gonna use that in your personal training because to use practice score in your personal training is somewhat laborious. You have to go in and actually build the stage every single time and add shooters and like create a new shooter ever, for every single string. It's not really gonna be worth your time to do that um, with this timer for personal training. Again, but for matches, it's up. It's 100% worth it. So uh, for matches, this is a great timer. Now, with that said, um, this seems to be a lot of folks' favorite timer right now, and I honestly can't figure out why. Um, to be honest, this doesn't offer me anything that I use um, that this doesn't have for personal training. Um, it's a little bit more expensive. I think these are like 160 right now, uh, but also it's just a small kind of brand new startup company, so it might take you six plus months after you order one to get one of these. Um, and their customer service is basically non-existent. Most folks that I know that have sent an email into customer service, like, hey, I ordered this thing eight months ago, where is it? Just never receive a response. And you just kind of hope that one day uh, one of these show up in the mail. So um, to me, I don't have a great reason to buy this. The other thing I really don't love about this is there's no clip whatsoever, and there's no way to mount one. Now, um, there are some folks that are out there 3D printing belt brackets where you can, it basically clamps onto this and then you can clip it onto your belt and lift it up and so forth. But I don't love that. The other thing I don't love about this, it has a front facing screen only. So with this timer, when it's on my belt, I can look down at the timer without taking it off the belt and read the information. This is very useful because it saves efficiency. If I'm doing a bunch of strings really quickly, maybe working on draws or reloads or whatever it is, for each string, I just simply look down, see the time, hit start again, and I'm on to the next string. Versus with this one, I either have to go buy that extra clip or I have to actually take it off my belt or pick it up or however you want to do it. It's just not as great, the fact that this has no clip on it uh, whatsoever. So um, not a bad timer. I just really can't come up with a good recommendation, a good reason to recommend this timer uh, other than for matches with the Bluetooth functionality that it has. So that's the AMG. Uh, now, we're going to get to some of the more premium timers that are on the market right now. Um, we'll start with this one right here. This is the Shooters Global. And this one really kind of took the uh, the training world by storm because this is you know one of the probably the smartest timers that's out there right now. It has a ton of features and functionalities that really are powered by this screen, 
but also by the companion app that comes on your phone. And the two things work together in some pretty cool ways to let you do a lot of cool stuff. Um, this has all the features that basically any of these have in terms of using it as a timer. Other than I don't think this, this actually integrates with practice score yet. It may in the future. Um, that's more of a practice score thing. They have to integrate it with, with the timer. But um, this has all the features in terms of volume adjustment, sensitivity adjustment, par times, random times, you know, versus set delays versus, you know, whatever you want to do. It also has a bunch of settings in terms of the sensitivity on the microphone. So you can set this up specifically for trying to pick up dry fire, which it actually does a pretty good job of picking up dry fire. You can set this up specifically to use with an airsoft gun. And yes, it actually does a pretty good job of picking up splits on an airsoft gun. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff that this has. Um, it also has, as far as the app compatibility, probably the number one thing that I use this timer for is the video mode that comes with it. So you can set your phone up as a camera and then you can use this timer and the camera will obviously film you shooting and right there on the video, it will overlay all of your shooting information. So your, your first shot time and then all your splits and then your final time, it'll show right there on the video. Um, this is useful as an example for maybe match footage, right? Um, to have that record if they're not using AMG timers that sync that information to practice score, you now have a record of what you did on your stage and you can try to figure out where holes in your game are. I use this constantly for classes because what I can do is as an example, I'll run a stage using video mode on this, have a full record of what I did. Then I can take videos of my students and I can show them side by side. Hey, here's exactly where you're gaining or losing time. That looks a little something like this to give you an idea what this video mode looks like. Just for reference, was a 408. My last shot over there was a 339. So um, you know, you know, a good half second ahead or whatever, but we're 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 pretty close considering the fact that you just had that that 0.55 split um, back there. Now you'll notice I'm a step or two ahead. Um, as far as location on the stage, but that's not a, a massive issue. Where we're gonna start seeing some major separation is actually after this point. So watch what happens here. So um, the, the the number that I have an issue with is this one right here. This 1.48 seconds of no shooting. So that's pretty cool. It also has a bunch of other smart features. Like as an example, you can actually build stages in the app and do like augmented reality walkthroughs of your stages and stuff. Bunch of smart features. But to be honest, the only one that I use is that video mode. Um, the rest of them I don't find particularly useful to be completely honest. So I use this as a basic timer and I use it for video mode. Things that I don't like about this, it's $300, right? Um, so it's pretty expensive. Also, it doesn't have any kind of actual clip on it either. Um, it only has this magnetic base, which has a clip on it. Um, so you can clip this onto your belt and then slap the timer on there and that's how it holds on. Um, I don't love that for a couple reasons. Number one, if you're really getting aggressive running around, this can come off the magnetic base. I've had it happen. Also, um, every time you take this on and off the base, it's going to record that as a shot. So if I go ahead and start this, I had a long delay on there apparently, and I take this off, it didn't pick it up that time. If I put it back on, of course it records a, a shot sometimes and it did it right there. As I took it off the base, it will record a shot as well. So as an example, if I have this clipped onto my belt and I do a, a build drill, my time is 150 as an example, I'll I'll holster up, pick up, and it says 225. And I'm like, what in the world happened? Right? Well, it, it recorded another shot as I took it off the base. So that's a little annoying. Um, the other thing that's annoying, frankly, the beep is too quiet. Um, it, it just really is. Um, it's not too quiet to use for personal training when you're on the range by yourself or for dry fire. Works great for that. Um, what it is too quiet for is using in a class. It's just, if I have a bunch of people on the line and I'm trying to use this timer, the beep is just nowhere near loud enough for a whole line to hear what's going on. Uh, quick comparison, again, here's the pack timer. Here's this timer. Sounds pretty loud, right? But the thing is, when I put it on the bass and do the same thing again, way more muffled, right? 
Um, so even it's a little bit, it's a definitely more quiet than these are when it's off the bass, but when it's on the bass, it's pretty much unusable in any kind of group setting. So um, that's definitely a downside for me um, in, in my book to that timer. It has another feature, which seems like it would be really cool, which is what they call spy mode. So again, the idea for this is like in a match, if they're not using the AMG timers, I can put this on my belt and put it in spy mode and it will listen for the beep from whatever timer they're using on the match. And then it will start and it will record all of my data. So I can go back in here and look at uh, what were all my splits in that stage? What, what were my transitions? What were my movement? What was my reload? All that kind of information will be stored in here. Uh, the problem is in my experience, it almost never matches up perfectly to the actual time that's recorded on the stage. I think I would suspect that the, you know, the splits and all that information is correct, but the total time isn't going to be right because it struggles to listen to the beep and sort of do the calculation on exactly when that started. At least that's, that's my interpretation of what's going on there. Um, I know some folks have had decent luck with it. I think it, it depends on which timer they're using on the stage, how loud the beep is, so on and so forth. But that is an interesting feature that it has that none of the rest of these have. This has history, you know, all the smart features you would expect from a timer like this um, are will be stored in here. So a lot of cool stuff in that regard. Um, okay, let me turn this one off. The last one, the Kestrel, right? Um, to be completely honest, I really wanted to not like this timer because it's another $300 timer. So it's, it's pretty expensive um, and it's not nearly as smart as say the Shooters Global. So I was like, why are they charging $300 for this? However, this just might be my new favorite timer, unfortunately. It's the one that I'm using the most right now. And it's a really good combination. If I could just pick and choose features that are actually useful from all of these and combine them into one timer, this might be it. So first thing you're gonna notice when you pick this up, man, it's just overbuilt. It, it just feels extremely rugged and solid. Um, However, I'm not sure the screen is as rugged and solid as some of the rest of these. I, I already have, I don't know if you'll be able to see them on camera. There's some scuffs there on the front and on the top screen, there's actually a, a dent in there as well. But I, I get, these are kind of pro protective shrouds, I think, not the actual screen. So I'll see how those hold up. This is my, my newest timer. So I do have to kind of see how it holds up over time. Uh, probably my favorite thing that's super unique about this timer is the fact that it has two screens. That's very useful because for instance, when I want to look at history, right? Here's a, a history of the last few strings of fire that I did. There's a lot of information in there that would be really difficult to display on the small screen on there or on you know, the small top screen on a pack timer. Um, so it's really nice to have that front screen, but it's also really nice to have the top screen. Again, when I put this on my belt, now I can look down and see that the, the main information that I wanna know when I'm doing you know mechanics drills, first shot time, total time, that kind of thing, number of shots recorded, all, the, all that's gonna be listed here, your split, your first shot, and your total, right? Um, but there's just not enough room on this top screen to see all the information, like again, history, or if I go into settings, right, there's a bunch of settings in here that would be tough to deal with on that top little screen. So I, I really dig the fact that this has two screens on it. That is very, very useful. Um, this also has presets, like a bunch of them, so I can go in there and set it up. You know, I can have a preset set up for, you know, here's a match preset, here's a class preset, here's a personal training preset, here is, you know, dry fire, delay part times, that kind of stuff. I can do all that in here. Um, and it just has all the basic features that you need. It also has a very strong um, clip on it that I dig a lot and have no complaints about so far. I've been very happy uh, with the clip that's on there. It's also very loud. Um, it, it, I would say it rivals the, the pack timer. If, if maybe not being a little bit louder, uh, I'm not too sure. Here's what it sounds like. Pretty, uh, not, oh, that was on medium. I was like, that wasn't as loud as I was expecting. That was on medium. Here's what it sounds like. Very loud. Uh, so it was actually funny. I was in the bay next to my buddy, Nick Young from Velox training group up at ORD. And uh, I was like, I would, I would be like listening <laughs> for him to be like, stand by and I would immediately hit the timer. Uh, and I was starting his guys. It was kind of funny. 
but um, that's how loud this thing is. You can hear it like from the next bay and it sounds like it's right next to you. So that for class use is very cool, but it does have adjustable volume settings in there for, for personal training, in, you know, indoor part-time stuff. You can turn that down. Um, again, this has all the, all the settings in there that you would want. It has a backlight, a backlit screen on it. You know, everything that you would want basically is, is in this timer, which, which I like a lot. So this might be my new favorite. If you're looking for really a premium option and don't mind spending the money, um, this is probably my new favorite timer as of right now. And then if you just want something basic, right, for, for personal dry fire training and training on the range, it's for 130 bucks. It is so hard to not recommend the pack timer for me these days. It just has everything you need, nothing you don't, and it's, it's super durable. Um, so that's my basic breakdown right now of what I consider to be the top timers on the market and some of the pros and cons. Obviously, this is not exhaustive. I could do videos this length on each and every one of these timers and all the features that they have and how to use them and so forth. But hopefully that's a, a decent basic breakdown of the pros and cons of these and will help you make a decision if you're looking for a new timer, which one is the best for you. If I forgot something that you think is important to know about these timers or if you have questions, please drop that down below and um, I will get back to you as soon as I can or, or do a follow-up video if we absolutely have to. But uh, until next time, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.